Park showcases Earth's earliest evidence of life. This is Guayanas National Park Reserve, Marine Conservation Area, and Haida Heritage Site. To most, it's simply known as Guayanas. This park protects 1,500 square kilometers of land and 3,500 square kilometers of marine habitat. Guayanas is off the west coast of BC, and it is about 600 kilometers north of Vancouver Island. You can only access the park by boat or float plane. The land is the ancestral home of the Haida people. Guayanas is all about connection between the land and sea. And the story starts with the Haida, who have had that connection here on Haida Gwaii for over 13,000 years. Guayanas means islands of beauty to the Haida. At the southern tip of the park on Anthony Island is the village of Skungwai. The village contains the remains of longhouses and standing mortuary poles. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. When Guayanas was established in 1988, there was an agreement between the province of British Columbia and the government of Canada to set aside the land for future generations. And then a few years later in 1993, uh, another agreement was signed between the government of Canada and the Council of the Haida Nation. Guayanas is made up of 138 individual islands. The largest is Morsby Island. Morsby Island is the backbone of the park and makes up the majority of its land mass. The island's most dramatic feature is the San Cristobal mountain range, which stretches 50 kilometers and reaches heights of more than 1,000 meters. At the southernmost tip of Guayanas is Kungit Island. This island spans 215 square kilometers, ending at Cape St. James. The park receives more than 4,000 millimeters of rain every year triple the Canadian average. As rainwater drains from the highest mountains of the San Cristobal Range, 
it helps fill more than 40 freshwater lakes throughout the park and creates the perfect environment for lush rainforests. Close to 90% of the land in Guayanas is covered in rainforest. The forest is, is to me, one of the most exciting terrestrial ecosystems. Uh, just the, the, the scope, the immensity of all these trees, the incredible lushness, the moss dripping off in thick gobs, it's, uh, it's absolutely spectacular to be here. Uh, you just feel so small and surrounded by just so much beauty, it's incredible. Over millions of years, the shorelines of Guayanas have risen and fallen from the sea, crafting the rugged landscape we see today. The waters shelter a variety of mammals, including stellar sea lions, who are only found here in the Pacific Ocean. The protection of Guayanas ensures that its captivating beauty is preserved from mountaintop to ocean floor. To the east is the province of Alberta and a park that saved the wood bison from extinction. Wood Buffalo in northern Alberta is the largest national park in Canada and one of the largest on the planet. The park is 45,000 square kilometers of land. Here, distinct ecosystems collide and extend as far as the eye can see. Wood Buffalo's northern border stretches into the Northwest Territories. The park is bigger than Switzerland. During the 19th century, North Americans hunted the plains bison to near extinction. Wood buffalo was created in 1922 to ensure the wood bison was not similarly persecuted. It's believed that there were about 168,000 bison, wood bison in North America, and um, this area that is Wood Buffalo National Park was part of their habitat. Uh, south of that was the range of Plains bison. So 
at about the same time that plains bison populations were being decimated, wood bison populations went down as well. Today, wood buffalo is home to the largest herd of free-roaming wood bison on Earth. Salt plains dot the park, providing important nutrients for the bison. The habitat is very important for the bison because they do need the salt as a salt lick. Um, and Wood Buffalo National Park was deemed a World Heritage Site because of the free roaming bison and um, the salt plains, the uniqueness of this landscape. Over three million years ago, this area was covered in an inland saltwater sea. The salt plains are formed when rainwater falls and percolates through the land. It travels deep down to the floor of the Canadian Shield granite, all along collecting the salt from the ancient sea. The rain then flows to the salt plains where the water evaporates, leaving behind the salt and minerals. Visitors like to come down and take their shoes off and walk in the, the salt-rich mud. And it, it actually feels really cool if you're stepping on the salt crystals because it feels like an effervescence tingling under your feet. Within Wood Buffalo's border lies one of the world's largest inland freshwater deltas. The key element of the delta is the, is the water that comes in. We don't have that much of rainfall. We're a very low rainfall area. So the d entire delta is dependent on waters coming in the river systems, um, flooding over the landscape. The Peace Athabasca Delta is located in the southeastern corner of the park and is where the Peace, Athabasca, and Birch Rivers meet. Six hundred thousand square kilometers of watershed flow into this stunning delta. The soil's coming in with the river water. It gets laid down here in the delta. And that's how deltas are formed, by all this fine material that comes on the river system and slowly builds up over time. You can just see all that uh, fine silts and clays. While the delta is covered in grasslands, the rest of the park protects Canada's northern boreal plains. It's the largest contiguous bit of uh, boreal ecosystem in, in North America. It straddles a border, um, has huge landscape features which are world-class and world-renowned. Uh, it's a World Heritage Site identified under UNESCO.
the flattened boreal plains is interspersed with streams, bogs, and boreal forest. Wood Buffalo National Park safeguards many of Western Canada's gems, from the boreal plains to the wood bison. It's a role that park staff embrace. We have a huge responsibility of, of, of maintaining um, the ecosystems and the ecological integrity of, of huge natural ecosystems for the benefit of Canadians and, and, and our health for the future. On the western slopes of the Canadian Rockies is Yoho National Park. It's relatively small, but packs a huge surprise high atop its mountain peaks. This is Yoho National Park. Yoho is a Cree word meaning awe and wonder. Yoho protects the western slopes of the Canadian Rocky Mountains in British Columbia. Yoho is Canada's second national park. It's only 1,313 square kilometers. It's got a lot packed into that small area though. We have got 30 peaks in Yoho that are higher than 3,000 meters. So that's over 10,000 feet in elevation. And that's not even all the peaks in Yoho. Yoho gained official park status in 1886 and was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1984. Two hundred thousand people visit this park every year. The park is so popular that visitors must book accommodation a year in advance. Yoho is also home to the world-famous Burgess Shale. It is the largest fossil field in the Canadian Rockies, located 8,000 feet above sea level. This is the spot that over 200 different species have been discovered. The only spot in the world that the diversity of species have been found in a general locality. This would have been a predator. Mm. Has a big, what's known as a glabella. Mm -hmm. So it definitely was a predator of smaller species. So even back then you had predator-prey relationships. People come from across the globe to explore the remains of an ancient sea in the sky. Life was in the sea, 
over 500 million years ago. And uh, then we went through a period of mountain building, plate tectonics. Now that would have started around 150 million years ago where the continents collided, causing uplift of that sea floor. And these ended up, you know, at one time they were in the sea, but with that plate tectonics and the uplift of the layers of rock, they ended up being mountains. Ninety percent get up here and, and think, wow, I made it. A lot of people, this is their life goal to get up here. It's humbling to realize that these were animals that were on our planet over 500 million years ago. And their importance to what we have on the planet today, our diversity of life on the planet today. Canada's parks protect some of the country's most diverse and spectacular natural environments. The thing that I love about Guadalajara is you get the pristine experience, you get the wilderness experience with not a ton of people around you. You get to travel through the water and hear the water lapping around your kayak. It's the bigness and you know all the different things that, that are protected and I feel quite privileged to have flown over a lot of wood buffalo and I'm still moved when I'm flying over it. I get a renewed sense every time of just how big it is and that's pretty rare in Canada. National parks don't belong to the government of Canada. They belong to every Canadian. They're a big part of our cultural and our national heritage. This is where natural process is allowed to take place. National parks are an important resource that we can come and enjoy. We can come here and we can feel replenished. We can be rejuvenated by the experiences that we have here. Rain or shine.